by the beard of Zeus. In this video, we're going to talk about filtering with AG Grid and View. This is basic AG Grid View setup. We've got some row data, some column definitions, and default call def. And we're loading some data here from the server. Note that when I hover over the column headers, no hamburger is displayed to open the menu. If you'd like to filter by a particular column, add property filter and set it to true on its column definition. An athlete column has a hamburger that appears when we click on it. The filter appears in a pop-up. This is the simple text filter. It's the default filter that appears when you're using the AJ Grid community version. The text filter allows for text filtering. I'm going to set it to return back all values to start with Suzanne or Linda, and there's magic in the world. Okay, let's return to column devs. The default filter was used because I only specified true here. If I wanted to use a specific type of filter, I would provide the filter name. This would include custom filter components I have built myself. Firstly, registering the filter component and then providing the name. Here, I'll reference the default filter by name. It's called AJ Text Column Filter, and that has the same effect. I'm still showing the default text column filter here. There are five filter types in total that come with AG Grid. Three of them come with the community version, and two of them with the enterprise version. Let's look at the three versions that come with AG Grid community and set them up on the three columns here athlete, age, and date. Text column filter, number column filter, and date column filter. I also set flex equals to one across all of the columns using default call def. That's got nothing to do with filters. I just spread the columns across the width of the grid so I can see all of the columns at once. The athlete filter is still the text filter. On the age column, I've got a filter that looks similar, but this is the number filter. You can see the values in the dropdown here are different, specific to numbers. So let's do equal 23 or equal 18, or how about less than 18? And you can see 17, 16, and 15 in the age column. And lastly, the date column has been provided with a date filter where I can provide any date I want and the filter doesn't work. Well, don't worry, that's because the values in the date column are actually string values from my data, not date object. I'm going to show how to solve this a bit later in the video. All of these filters are highly customizable. Let me show you how to do that by using filter params. Columns with filters now have filter params object. Currently the object is empty. I will start with debounce milliseconds set to zero on the athlete column. When I enter something in the athlete filter, the action will happen straight away. On the age column, I will set it to three seconds. So it should take three seconds after I type 19. So whack for the daddy -o, there's whiskey in the jar and the filter's active. It's unlikely that you want to have different debounds for different columns. So what we'll do instead is take the debounds milliseconds out of each individual columns and set it in the default def instead. Debounce is now specified here at the default column def, which means this filter params will be applied to all different columns. So if I go back to the athlete column, I should still see there is zero debounce. That's right. And if I go to age column, it should be the same. Yeah. Another very useful property is the buttons property. The buttons property takes an array of strings. I will provide apply and clear. And because it's in the default call def, will get applied to all of the filters. That means that all of the filters, when I bring them up, will now have apply and clear buttons. When the apply button is present, the filter will not apply automatically. For example, if I type in here, Tony, filter will not be applied until I click the apply button. The clear button will clear the filter and then I need to click apply again to apply the cleared filter. Typically, you'd only have one or two buttons here, but in total, there are four buttons that you can display. So to explain them all, let me add in all four buttons now. There are now four buttons appearing. Apply clears before and cancel and reset. Buttons appear in the same order that we have provided them down here. Let me filter by Michael and hit apply. And as before, the rows are filtered by Michael. If I hit clear, the UI will clear the filter will not be cleared. If I hit cancel, it will cancel my edit, meaning it will put back the previous state, which means it's going to be filtered by Michael. And then if I reset, it will both clear the UI and clear the filter. So you might think right now, clear cancel and reset, that was a bit confusing, but let me go through it one more time. Clear clears the UI, cancel, 
will set the UI back to previous state of the active filter or clear it if there is no active filter and reset will clear the UI and clear the active filter. Okay, four buttons is a bit much for me. So for this demo, let me take away two buttons and go back to just apply and clear. There is one more filter property I want to tell you about before we move on. Remember, I told you that the date filter wouldn't work because our values in here are strings and not date objects. Well, we can fix that by providing a comparator. So I've provided a comparator here inside the filter params for the date column. And if I go to the date column now and put in a date, I can see that the filtering is working. To explain this comparator is a bit too detailed for this video, but in a nutshell, here's the date from the filter, here's the date from our data. We convert our string date into a date object. And then we compare the two date objects here. I want to step back a bit and look at how to get a state of a filter and set the state of a filter. And that's done by using filter models. First, I'll remove the comparator, get grid API, and make two buttons with click events and handlers to save and apply the filter state. And we're done. You can see our buttons with click events and handlers. Save filter state, apply filter state. I am using on grid ready event to get the reference to grid API and import ref from you to hold the grid API and saved filter model. Save button, we'll call the save filter state. And you guessed it, we use grid API to get the filter state. Console log it and save it to the saved filter model ref. Apply button calls apply filter state. And you guessed it again, we use the saved filter model. Console log it and use grid API to set it into the grid. I will open the dev console and bring up the filter. Let's put in Tony or Mike and click save button. At this point, the filter is now saved in saved filter model ref. And we can check the content by looking at what was printed to the console. The key is the ID of the column and the value is the filter model for that column. You don't need to understand the makeup of this complex object here. You just need to understand that this is an object that you can convert to JSON, maybe then store, and then you can bring it back at a later point and reapply to the grid. So let's reapply it here. Before doing so, let's clear the filter. Note that the column is not filtered. Then if I click on apply, the filter has been applied back. Okay, that was just one column. Let me apply a filter onto two columns simultaneously. So I'll put equals 34 on the age column. And then when I hit save, I can see that the filter model now contains two columns, age and athlete. So in other words, when you save the filter model, it will save the filters for all columns. And when you apply the filter model, it will apply the filter to all columns. I'm going to clear down these two filters and save with no filters applied. I can see down here, it has saved an empty object. If I then apply a filter and then apply my saved filter, the filter is cleared. So in your app, if you want to clear all the filters, apply an empty model. Okay, onto the next item. I'm just going to close down the dev console and scroll to column devs. We'll now move on to floating filters. I will add one to the athlete column by setting floating filter equal to true. On the right hand side, you can see a floating filter at the top of the athlete column. Anything I type in here will be applied as a filter. This is kept in sync with the main filter. So any changes you make in the floating filter will appear in the main filter as well. Likewise, any changes you make in the main filter will be reflected back onto the floating filter. I will now apply the floating filter to all columns by putting the property under the default call def and clean up a bit. Now, floating filter is on athlete, age and date column because there are three columns with filters. So far, we had a look at the text, number, and date filters. These are the three filters that come out of the box with AG Grid Community. Each of those filters is far more capable than what we've gone through in this video. But I will leave these details for a later video where we look at each of those filters individually. Now, we're going to move on and look at the filters that come with AG Grid Enterprise. First step is to enable AG Grid Enterprise in our application. We do this by adding AG Grid Enterprise as a dependency and also importing AG Grid Enterprise into our JavaScript code. I can verify Enterprise now is active by looking at the dev console and we can see the warning messages saying that we don't have a license key. But that's fine, we're just trialing. You don't need the license to trial. AG Grid Enterprise comes with two additional filters. They are called the set filter and the multi filter. 
set filter is configured on the year column and multi filter is configured on the country column. Let's first go to the year filter and open it up. Here we can see the set filter. This is meant to look a bit like the filter you would see in Excel. The values to be selected from are taken from data and you can select them individually, select all or deselect all, or you can do a search on the top and hit enter to apply. Then moving on to the country column, I can see the multi filter, arguably the most powerful of all the filters as it combines two filters into one. By default, it will combine the text filter and the set filter. Here you can see the separator line separating the two filter types. On the top here is text filter. You can see in the drop down all of the options which you would have in the text filter. Let's stick with contains and put in land. You can see in the background that the rows have been filtered with all the countries with the word land inside of them. But it's not just rows that got filtered. If you look at the set filter here, you'll notice that the values presented are also filtered by land. So I can fine tune the selection now using the set filter. So again, a multi filter allows you to combine two filters together. As a default, it is combined a text filter with a set filter. And combining filters together can give a very rich and powerful search experience to your users. You can also notice multi filter working with the floating filter in the background here. Set filter is the same, that will also work with the floating filter. And as you might have expected, the models can also be saved and reapplied for the set and multi filters. When I click save, you can see the model for the set and the multi filters. Okay, we're almost at the end. There's this one more gotcha I wanted to tell you about before we finish up. And that is what happens when the grid is not that high. Let me show you. The grid is now 300 pixels high, which is enough for a few rows. And it looks good until I open a filter. See here that not all of the filter has been displayed. It is clipped because the pop-up is using the grid as its root component. To fix that, we can configure pop-up parent. Here I have configured pop-up parent to be document body. And magic, the filter is no longer being clipped. I picked document body because it makes sense that you can pick any element that is in the DOM to be used as the pop-up parent. And that was it. We've gone through the overview of column filters with AG grid. We saw how to configure filters. We looked at the five filters provided out of the box by AG grid. We looked at filter models and we looked at floating filters. For each of those five filters we went through, I will have to do another video since each of those beauties is far more powerful than what I was able to show you in this video. And it's also worth noting that I only showed you the provided filters that come with the grid. It's also possible to create your own filters using view components and that's quite exciting, but again, for another video. Thank <music> you.